Okay, so now we're doing the um, context and agreement chapter from my book, Overcoming ACT English. So this is going to be pronouns quiz number one. So we're seeing if we need to fix this portion right here. So as the fall semester approached, Maria, along with other college freshmen, were brimming with anticipation and anxiety about her transition to dormitory living. So this, a lot of people get confused because they see college freshmen right here. So we're, they think we're talking about multiple people. So um, this should be were because that's plural. But actually were is supposed to be referring just to the subject Maria. Um, this is an interruption, one of those non-essential clauses, those interruptions. And this is supposed to match the subject Maria, which is singular. So that means that we need to have a singular, a singular subject. So it has to be either B or C. And then um, we have, let's see, moving away into her home was both exciting and intimidating. So they're using was like the past um, instead of the present. So it would be was brimming instead of is. Because remember, everything needs to match context, like agree with the context. So it's not just like about that one sentence. Um, because even you could say Maria is brimming with it, anticipation and anxiety, um, technically, but it doesn't match like the, the surrounding context of the paragraph, if that makes sense. Was is what was does. <laughs> so here it says for number two, moving away from home and into a space of her own was both exciting and intimidating. So here, if you just read that sentence in isolation, it could sound um, OK to say, um, a space of their own um, because you could say okay like maybe it, they're talking about multiple people because you don't have the surrounding context if you just read the sentence in isolation but because we know from the pre preceding sentences um, or sentence sorry um, that we're talking about Maria we know that the pronoun can't be there we're referring to her as in Maria so it needs to be her and then it's just a space not multiple spaces because we're talking about um like the one dorm room um and like if you didn't already know what like dormitory living like was referring to like she only gets one dorm room um you could see that in like the next sentence so that would have to be a no change so for number three, her and her roommate Carla already had plans for how they would decorate their shared spaces. Again, this is one of those things where it might sound right, but it's not grammatically correct. Um, like you might say her and her roommate when you're talking, but um, that's not correct, which is why we can't just go off of our ear because this is the subject that we're um, discussing right here. So it has to be she and her roommate. So it would have to be D as the correct answer. For number four, it says, um, after all, the room wasn't just Maria's. This belonged to Carla as well. So th what's the underlying portion is referring to the room. So it's that one singular room. And, um, it, and we would have to re replace the the word room with it for the correct pronoun so it matches room basically is why we're picking that so for number five um a lot of you would get confused by this one also um it should be if anything it would be she and carla and some people might pick b because they'll think oh then it'll say she and carla but remember you're replacing the entire underlying portion so if we pick b it would be the experiences that she shared when we're supposed to be talking about two different people maria and carla so the correct um version uh, the correct answer to put there would be they the experiences that they shared both good and bad good and bad played a pivotal role in this transformation so it would have to be c so number one here is testing how, remember how one and you are loners. So those words, when we see them in the context of like a paragraph, you can't be mixing and matching you and one. So that's what this is testing here. And they're already using you right here. So I know that I need to match that context. So it can't be automatically, I know A or B. And then if you look at answer choice D, it's also using one there, like it sneaks it in. So that's why it can't be that one. 
so then it would have to be C. So I forgot to bold this portion. It looks like I accidentally put the two there and then forgot to bold this. So technically we're supposed to be changing this entire underlying portion right here after the number two that I wrote. So it says, however, experience shows that it's wise to be selective. Packing strategically means no one will be more organized uh, or sorry, means one will be more organized and less cluttered. Now, remember, one and you are loners, and already previously we knew, we know that we have to be sticking with you, not one. So it can't be the no change because that's using that one right there. So then let's check all the other options to make sure that we don't have that. And then C, you'll see, also uses one, so it can't be that one. <laughs> and then um, this one also uses one right there. So it would have to be B because that's the one that uh, <laughs> the one that only uses you. Okay, so now we're moving on to relative pronouns quiz number one. So we're at number one right here. So it says the room that she was able to share with a complete stranger was smaller than she had imagined. Okay, so we're referring to the room. So um, the room is not a person, so we wouldn't use whom. Um, the room um, is being used, hold on, the room which uh, that she was able to share with a complete stranger. I'm trying to think of like how to state this because technically like a room is a physical location, which you would have seen like that's how we differentiate between like when and where. Um, but it's, I'm trying to think of how to like say it. It's being referred to like more as like a thing here. So that's why you would use which. It's not like you're saying um, that's my favorite room where I go to study every day. Like you're in that sentence, you would be referring to room as a location, more like a physical location. Here it's being referred to more as like a thing. Um, so that's why you would use which. So now for number two, on one desk was a stack of books and a laptop that belonged to her roommate, which had arrived earlier. So the underlying portion, um, we have to ask ourselves, like, what is it referring to? Well, it's referring to her roommate, which is a person. Remember, which is for things. Um, so I even just said it out loud. Like, it's that's why you can't go based off of your ear. But um, you, you can't use which to refer to people, which her roommate is a person. So we would have to use who or whom. And in this case, it would be who. Um, remember, you can use that trick of like, would you put he or him there? Or in this case, would you put she um, or her there? Um, and you could see like if he works or she works, that it would be who. Um, like you wouldn't say her had arrived earlier, so it wouldn't be whom, but you could say she had arrived earlier and that makes sense. So it would be who. So like when she or he matches up, it's who. When um, him or her matches up, it's whom with the M. So this would be C. Now for number three, we're going to say her parents with who she was very close. So here we are referring to people, her parents. So it has to be either who or whom, but the correct um, thing that should go in the underlying space would be whom. Because think about it, you don't say with he, I mean, you wouldn't say with he, you would say with him. Like that's what makes sense. Or like you could think of they and them in this context if you want as well. Um, but it's the same sort of um, idea where you wouldn't use um, like something that would be a subject there. It doesn't make sense. So since he doesn't work, who doesn't work? But since him works, whom works? So it would be C. And then for number four, let's see where's number four. The university whom, well, right away, that part's supposed to be referring to university, which is not a person, so it can't possibly be whom. Um, so we have to look at the other options. So we're deciding between where that and um, which for what goes here. Because we know it can't be whom because the university is not a person. Now, while the university is a place, um, it's you're not saying like the university um, where had a reputation for rigorous academics. Like you're not referring to it in that kind of like 
place I don't know how to say it besides placey way <laughs> but kind of like with the first example that I gave you um you're referring to the university as like this this thing um here so that's why it would be which instead of where now for number five we are referring to like the place like at, we're referring to place as like a location um a physical location so we would use where there but where is not an option however remember we learned um in one of the previous videos that if when or where works we could also replace that with in which so if where is not an option in which could be the correct choice which it is so that's the one that you would pick for number five so now we have for number six um, the underlying portion is referring to the freshman orientation. So that's a thing. So um, we would be referring to it with um, which. Um, you can't use that because remember, you can't have a, a comma before that. So it would have to be which. So for number one here, it says Jessica. And then there's a blank. This is relative pronouns quiz number two, by the way. So Jessica blank dedication to her studies was well known, was excited to start her college journey. So Jessica is the person we're referring to. She's a person. So that means we have to use one of the variations of who. Um, so it has to be one of these two. Now, remember, who apostrophe S means who is. We could not say Jessica who is dedication to her studies. That doesn't make sense. We would say whose dedication. So it would have to be B. And then for the next one, it says the college blank Jessica chose because of its esteemed faculty was the perfect fit for her. The college is, um, we're referring to the college as like this thing. So it would have to be um, either like which or that, but we see that there's a comma right there. So we have to use which, A. And then for number three, the week blank Jessica met her roommate was filled with new experiences so we're referring to the week with whatever we pick here so the week is a a time that we're referring to so remember when we refer to time it's going to be when so for number four we're referring to the student so student is a person so it has to be one of the variations of who so it can't be c um, so we would say the student, um, right away, I like to check like if who is works, if I see that, cause it's like really easy to kind of just plug in and see if it works. So the student who is research won the grant. No, the student whose research won the grant. Yes. Um, we would say that and it would not be, um, like there's, we wouldn't say whom research won the grant doesn't make sense to use that. Um, what do you call it? Um, like you wouldn't say him research won the grant like it just doesn't make sense if you use the little trick that I taught you where like if him works um, then you could say that whom works it doesn't so it would just be whose if you didn't like automatically know that so then it would be for number five the dormitory um, blank Jessica stayed had a rich history so the dormitory here is being referenced as like a place that she stayed at. So it's being referenced as a physical location. So that means where has to work. But, um, and you wouldn't see this on the exam. Like they're not going to say like pick both B and C. But I just kind of like did it to like have an extra like challenge added to this problem. Um, but remember if where works in which also works. So that means both B and C are correct. So then for number six, Jessica had a mentor um, so referring to this mentor and their guidance, um, that's invaluable. So mentor is a person, so it would have to be either A or B. You could use the little like who is trick. So Jessica had a mentor who is guidance. That doesn't make sense. So it would have to be whose. Um, you could also think like possessive if you want to, but I think like the who is trick is kind of easier for most people. Um, so then number seven, Jessica remember the day. Um, blank she received her college acceptance letter so in this situation um we're referring to day which is um a time so remember when we refer to time it's going to be when and then for number eight it says she missed the days blank she had no responsibility and could just relax 
So um, days is what we're referring to. So that's a time. And then again, remember, it's not just where that can re be replaced by in which, it's also when. So this would be D because both A and C would be correct. Okay, I'm running out of battery on my phone, so I'm gonna do what I did with the punctuation quiz and upload a part two to this separately for the verbs portion.